Hi, I'm Dr. Lonnie Herman, and I want to share with you in this video findings of a patient who's here in my office for, uh, for different unique methods that I offer to help her reverse a cancer, to help her help her own body and her own immune system to reverse endometrial cancer. Now, this is after she had already had fibroids. She's, I think she's about 50 years old, fibroids since maybe late 40s, excuse me if I got that age wrong, but anyway, middle-aged woman. She had fibroids since she was about her 20 or, or, or so years of age. So fibroids had been there for a very long time. And she eventually developed endometrial cancer. And the doctors did a hysterectomy, a total hysterectomy, and chemo and radiation. The chemo and radiation did not work. Uh, because the the cancer came back. Long story short, the cancer came back. So, did the cancer ever leave is really the point that we must discuss. Did the cancer, did the causes of cancer ever get discovered? You see, when a doctor goes in, and they can do a lot of good work for a lot of people, but sometimes these, these chemo and radiation and surgical methods that they're using uh, in the cancer world are not working for people. There are people who take chemo radiation and have, in this case, like a, hyst a hysterectomy with this woman. Actually, the mass that they removed first, there was a report that showed that it punctured the mass and the cancer spread into the body. And that is really, that was uh, part of why this will, would not disappear from their methods offered to her. But let's get down to this. When the ca causes of cancer are not removed, the body, uh, uh, Never, the, the methods never beat the cancer. The cancer never disappeared. It was never gone. Because the environment that allowed that cancer to form in the first place was never fixed. Cancer is not some alien life form that enters the body. There are causes of cancer that have been discovered. And unless you are going after those causes of cancer, the likelihood of you, of you really eliminating the cancer from your body is, is, is kind of slim. Let's understand what's going on. She had endometrial cancer. They removed the tissues. The cancer returned in the endometrial, in the area of the endometrium, even though a full hysterectomy, ovarectomy was done. So I find in her, on this exam, and this was done June 29th of 2015, as one of the steps of, of helping her reverse her, her own disease in her body. Another step was about finding out about dental involvement. And so I've got some images that I can share with you showing uh, the infection in the mouth. And as infection in the mouth can cause disease in the body. You don't get rid of the infection in the mouth, that infection can be dripping down into the tissues and cause those tissues to get diseased. On this day, June 29th, the first tissue that I got to examine with her, the first priority tissue that was in order that needs to be healed in her body turned out to be her pudendal nerve. Now, for those of you who have not studied anatomy and physiology, the pudendal nerve is, is if we were to turn a woman on the side and cut the body in half and look at the, side, the inside of the body between the vaginal canal and the colon, between the rectum and the vagina, there is muscle here and it travels like this. This muscle is known as the pudendal nerve. One more time, pudendal nerve. I'll put that word up on the screen and you can look that up on Wikipedia or look up images for pudendal nerve. On, uh, excuse me, the pudendal muscle, excuse me, and the pudendal nerve. So we have this muscle tissue between the uh, vagina and the colon, and we also have a nerve that runs in that muscle tissue called the pudendal nerve. So the pudendal muscle and the pudendal nerve, uh, if I misspoke a, a moment ago. Now, understand something. Every single endometriosis case that I've worked with, where the doctors say there, there is endometriosis is an unknown uh, origin. They don't know why it forms but they can go in and do hysterectomies and they can provide medications and hormones and so on. You've got to get an understanding from a different point of view because nothing happens to the body just for some unknown reason. The only reason why it's unknown to these brilliant physicians who do these procedures, these surgical procedures, and they're supposed to be the experts because they can cut out lesion tissue is because they don't know how to examine the body to find 
what is causing the lesion to develop in the tissue. So I'm going to share with you this, this list of findings in her that was on the pudendal nerve that's also related to her endometrial cancer. But one, before I even get into the whole list, I want to start with one of the major factors here. One of the major findings, one of these environmental stressors, one of these illness factors that got into her body. Have you ever heard of shingles? Shingles is like chicken pox. Chicken pox is not a fun thing that happens to the skin for a kid or an adult. And what causes a shingles in the body is herpes zoster. This is a virus. Herpes zoster is what causes shingles. Now, if you've ever seen shingles on a person who you know or a friend, family member who you know who's had shingles, A, it is really painful, and B, these big blisters appear along a nerve pathway. It can also affect a blood vessel. When that herpes zoster affects a nerve pathway, these blisters, first there's pain along the nerve pathway, then whether it goes around the rib or it goes down the back or wherever it's gonna appear in the person's body, and then you get these big blisters and there is no medicine that's gonna reduce those blisters, then eventually those blisters burst and then the tissue goes through certain changes, lesions on the skin develop and it looks like a scar and that scar can last for many months until the tissue of the skin returns to normal. Now there are some cases of people with shingles where the pain never goes away. Where they can have that pain not just for a month or two or three or five or six months, they can have that pain from the herpes zoster for years along the same area where the shingles outbreak was. And when you don't change the environmental factors that allowed that herpes zoster to express itself and show the shingle appearance and the pain along the nerve pathway, it can come back, whether it's in the same area of the body or another area of the body. It can go down the leg. It can be in an arm. It can be around the whole rib cage on one side or both. So one of the findings in her pudendal nerve was the herpes zoster. Now understand, that herpes, that pudendal nerve is right in the tissue area where the endometrium is. It's right there by the uterus and all of that female reproductive tissue. So what, when you see a big blister of a shingles appear in the body, and it may take up an inch off the skin, I mean, these, these can be huge welts on the skin. When that occurs inside the body by the reproductive system, is it possible that that herpes zoster was not only on the nerve, but it was also in the endometrium. It was also possibly in the uterus, maybe on a fallopian tube, maybe on an ovary. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Is it possible that the welts from the herpes zoster outbreak inside on that pudendal nerve actually grew so big that it can actually penetrate into her uterus and cause lesions in the uterus that we would call endometri uh, endometriosis. Of course it's possible. Don't be blinded by the statements by doctors who don't understand the other parts of science and how systems uh, uh, work in the body and how, and how infections that are in the body can actually make lesions develop in the body. Because there are some women out there who don't want to believe what I'm sharing with you right now. They want to believe that the only way that you can actually deal with endometriosis is by cutting out the lesion. The lesion developed for a reason. It didn't just develop out of the blue because some alien life form got into the body. We're gonna cover that in advance. Now, on her pudendal nerve, which is connected to the whole endometrial area where the cancer is, I found mercury fillings from her teeth. That mercury filling, two kinds, dental amalgam and uh, a silver mercury compound in that pudendal nerve. That will make that nerve sick. That alone, mercury is a poisonous substance. Look it up online. I found x-ray and ionic radiation, two kinds of radiation on that nerve. Until those are removed from that nerve, that nerve is never gonna be okay. The tissue in that area down there can't be okay and can't be free of cancer. Why? Because radiation is one of the causes of cancer. I found one, two, 
three, four, four, five, five connections from her mouth to this pudendal nerve. Terrible dental infection, which I've shown in a picture on my Facebook page, I'll try to put it up here somehow on YouTube, a terrible dental infection from a is also, that infection is draining down into her pudendal nerve and the whole endometrial area. Gum disease going down into that, uh, that uh, pudendal nerve. And she's got uh, a, she's had some teeth that had fallen out because the teeth got diseased. Watch my other video about dental infections and how they can be related to organs here on YouTube. Uh, the, the, there's something called a neuralgia inducing cavitational osteonecrosis. And what does that mean? That the nerve can become pain and disease uh, because of an inflammation pattern caused by an infection in a bone of the jaw after a tooth had fallen out. That's what that means. Tooth falls out or tooth is pulled that was infected and the jawbone can be infected and that can travel to anywhere in the body, whether it's your heart or your brain or your endometrial or your endometrial area, your uterus, your ovary, a, a, a prostate, a testicle, it can go anywhere. So dental occlusion, we've got periodontal disease going there, we've got multiple mercuries uh, going there, we've got candida, we've got a candida glabrata, a candida tropicalis, a candida albicans traveling to her uh, pudendal nerve. She's got multiple iatrogenic chemicals affecting that pudendal nerve. These chemicals are cancer-causing chemicals, pesticides. There are poisons that are put into our environment, fluoride from toothpaste. You could have swallowed some toothpaste at some point in your life, and that can get into the body. The fluoride is a cancer-causing ingredient. Mold and fungus I found on the pudendal nerve. I also found multiple bacteria, multiple parasites, mycoplasma bacterial infection, multiple antibiotic residues on the pudendal nerve, making it sick. A very high level of infection of a bacteria called chlamydia, uh, excuse me, a sexually transmitted disease. Sorry for that. Uh, again, we found the herpes zoster, pesticides, and influenza virus. And I also found side effects and residues from multiple vaccinations that she had many, many, many years ago are hindering the function and the healing of her whole endometrial area. When the pudendal nerve is infected, the endometrial area is infected and it's toxic and it can't heal. It can't be well. So either you can start to learn from these videos that I share with you that you can actually find infections in specific tissues and eliminate them without a medication and help your body reverse the disease and the damage that's been developing for decades or months. You're able to do some unique things for yourself. You're able to help yourself heal your cancer. In many of the cases, you're able to do this when you can find and eliminate the causes of the disease. That's all I'm gonna share with you in this video about this patient. Um, listen, there's a way to heal. You can call my clinic, 954-370-3100, and, uh, and, and make an appointment, because there, there, there's a way to find out what's going on. There's a unique way uh, of finding which organs are infected with which infections and toxins, and, and eliminate those so you can let your body heal itself the way that it's been intended to do since the beginning of time. Okay, share this video with one friend. Click subscribe on my YouTube page. I put up videos all the time. I look forward to helping you and or a loved one. Thank you.